Hi, I'm Christine Cushing and welcome to another helping of my favorite foods, quarantine kitchen edition. How you doing? Over here, we've been about two weeks well into our second week of isolation, so it's about time. I'm gonna pull out all the stops, get that emergency glass broken, because we need our chocolate fix already. So this 15 minute stovetop chocolate pudding recipe is gonna be my isolation antidote. Let's go right into it. We're shooting live today, live cooking. There's not gonna be any edits. It's gonna be real time. So first thing I wanna do is get my milk heated on stovetop. Imagine if we run out of power as well. Shh, don't say that. So, so milk is gonna heat always over kind of a medium heat. And to that milk, I'm just gonna add the sugar. So again, I always put the recipe below the description. So I use natural sugar, it's going in. And we just wanna heat that up nicely. Did I mention this is gonna be literally 10 minutes? So you can get your chocolate fix right away. So in a little bowl here, I saved a little bit of that milk, so cold is gonna go into the bowl. And what I do here is mix in the, some dry ingredients that need to be blended. So the cornstarch is going in here. You always wanna put cornstarch into cold water. That's gonna prevent lumps or cold liquid, I should say. My secret for a great chocolate pudding is I do a combo. This is some good quality cocoa. Speaking about chocolate fix, hello. And a couple of egg yolks are gonna go in there too. Oops, this guy doesn't wanna go, there he is. And just a pinch of salt, and I'm gonna whisk that all together. Important to do this in cold milk, as I say, because you really wanna blend that cornstarch well. And make sure you have no lumps to speak of whatsoever. That's gonna take literally 30 seconds kind of as quickly as I can say it, it's already done. So the key here now is once the milk and the sugar come to temperature, that is just at the boiling point, we're gonna temper this liquid here that's got the yolks and the cornstarch in. So let's talk a little bit about what else is going in here. I'm using a great quality chocolate here. These are chips, but they're a good quality chip. So this is about a 70% cocoa because I do want this to be super chocolatey, but not very, very dense. It's gonna be, it's gonna have that kind of childhood pudding, feel good that you can get nice and close and cuddle up with, cause we're feeling this isolation thing. How are you doing? Is it crazy or what? But well, we gotta follow the rules. That's the key here, right? We wanna nip this thing in the bud. So I'm paying attention to everything that's happening here. In my pot, Whenever I'm heating milk, so there's sugar always in there, that's a thing that I always do if I'm making creme brulee or a custard. The sugar and the milk really helps to stop the milk from scorching because milk has sugars and if you heat it too high, sometimes you can scorch the bottom of it. I can see there's some steam coming up from that milk. It's just at the boil. See that? It's perfect now. Now we're gonna take it off making sure that's looking really great. I just wanna make sure I stir that sugar in. And we're gonna do a little tempering with some beeping. Put about a quarter of that milk in. And again, bring it back to the stove. And now I'm gonna be alternating between whisks and wooden spoons. Oh, don't make a mess, hello. Okay, I'm gonna turn down my temperature slightly. And this now that is tempered, it's nice and hot, we can go back in here and not scramble my yolks. But I wanna make sure, see here, there's all kinds of liquid still left in there. I wanna make sure I scrape all of that out. Okay, I start with a wooden spoon, making sure that I'm sort of at a medium high, no, 
no much more than that, not much more than that, because I don't want to burn and start getting that cornstarch super, super thick quickly. But the key here now is I want to bring this to a boil because that's going to get my cornstarch, making sure that my cornstarch is thickened and doesn't taste raw. You know, you're going to get that starchy flavor. So here's the magic of this pudding. Here I've got this little custard, almost like a, a creme pâtissière or a, a French pastry cream with just the yolks in it. The cornstarch is protecting those yolks from cooking too much. Different than a creme anglaise, which is really just yolks and a bit of cream. So I'm telling you this little story just for enough time to see what's happening here in the bottom. We want to see bubbles, which I think we're going to see pretty soon. And once we see that it's boiling, for about 30 seconds or so, oh yeah, that's bubble. I'm going to bring it down in temperature. That means that we've thickened it. Everybody's done their job so far. We got a nice base of flavor there. But now what I have to do is add the rest of the ingredients. So now, off the heat, because that cornstarch eggs have thickened egg yolks, going in with the chocolate, the rest of the chocolate. Ooh, uh, chocolate and chocolate. Mama, going in. Chocolate and vanilla also are best friends. The vanilla really enhances it. It's a bit of a, you know, oxymoron, if that makes sense. But vanilla is really gonna give us depth and intensify that flavor. And the last thing I do is just add a bit of butter for some sheen and thickness when this all cools down. Now it's getting into that pudding territory. Oh, oh, oh. Are you feeling the antidote? Yes. It's so easy actually to make a pudding at home that it hardly makes sense to buy a packaged one. Okay, look at that. It's already looking super silky. Now we have to make some decisions and here's where there's always a challenge in every household. Everybody's got a different idea of what their chocolate is. Should we put a little orange zest in there? I happen to always have something citrus. If you don't have it in your house, I always get a little bit of pushback. What do you think? Should I put in just a bit? Because eh. orange and chocolate, really like a match made in heaven. It's kind of like peanut butter and chocolate for me too, or peanut butter and jelly already. Look at what's happening there. Hello. That is a seriously good. The aroma of this is ridiculous. Just telling you right now. Want to make sure I get that last bit off the spoon here. That's finishing there. Looking good. Ooh. If you could smell this right now, look at this. This is where you want to be, right there. <laughs> Look at that. Perfect texture, right? Silky, just enough chocolate, not too much. Ooh. Oh, heavy, heavy drool factor. Okay, this baby is done. Now the thing about chocolate pudding is, once it's cooked, you want to get that into your bowls because it's going to start forming a skin. But not before I do just a little test. You always have to do a little. Oh, can I tell you about the orange? That was a good idea. But what I was saying before is, this is a great thing that you can make Remember, I promised you simple ingredients, simple process. This is nothing you have to run out and look for in the crazy isolation that we're in. But really, anything you happen to have, if you have chocolate you know, in your cupboard, this is so easy to make. But you can customize it and keep it super, super plain for kids and then dress it up for anybody else. So guess what's happening? This is coming your way because it's now got to go into the fridge. Now, of course, 
You can get your chocolate fix right here, but for the pudding, we wanna set this in the fridge for about three hours, ideally. Chocolate pudding, oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, almost like I'm speechless, which as you know, doesn't happen very often. Okay, we wanna make sure we get even amounts, even amounts, and a little bit there. And they'll be a little bit in the pot for the chef. A good little trick, sometimes just to get that great surface on top, what I do is do a bit of, just with the back of my spoon, to just create a nice little perfect pattern on top. Now those babies, oh, that is good. Yow. Those babies need to chill for about three hours. So in the fridge. Now if you wrap them, so if I put plastic wrap on top of them, they're not gonna get that skin. But I like that little skin. So I made three earlier. These have chilled for three hours. Look at that. Yes, chocolate baby, chocolate. Now the question is, how do we dress these? And there's so many possibilities. I think definitely a little bit of whipped cream. I've made these before with a, a great caramel sauce, it's also fantastic. So I'm gonna take a nice little dollop of whipped cream, that's looking good. And I'm gonna go right there. Oh, that's good. Now, I, I made some here in this little glass because I think it looks really kind of nice in the glass, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna top this one over here for a moment so they're all done. You can keep them without whipped cream too. That's the beauty of it, right? So let's try, just do a little bit on this one here. I don't wanna get any on the edges. Oh, look at that. <laughs> now, what do you say? I thought for this one that we would go in with a few peanuts because we're in isolation. We need as much help as we can get and a little bit more chopped chocolate on top. Are you with me there? Everybody want peanuts? Yes, we're going that way. I made the executive decision. Oh, the peanuts and the chocolate, wow. Smells so great together. And then a little bit more of this. And we are good to go. What do you say? Is that good or what? Okay, I'm taking this one for me. After I made all this, you know I'm eating this whole thing. Look at that, perfect texture, nice thickness, and it's all about the mouth feel and then the combination of this. So let's see what we've done as an antidote. Oh boy. You can't see me eat this. This is such a success, not too sweet, perfect, Peanuts were really, really good. Thank you for joining me. This is an antidote for sure on another helping of my favorite foods in the quarantine kitchen. Please stay safe. Hope you're well. Keep cooking. We're gonna get through this together. Please send me your thoughts, your notes, anything you want me to cook, and give me a thumbs up. This is really, I think you're gonna wanna make this antidote chocolate pudding stovetop. Thank you so much, and see you next time in the quarantine kitchen.